Are you curious about medical cannabis? Maybe you're already a medical cannabis patient. Either way, Chessicana Enhanced Wellness can be your one-stop shop for all things relating to cannabis and its benefits. Chessicana is located in Baltimore County, right in Hunt Valley, and conveniently on your road. The dispensary has an amazing selection of medical cannabis products, an extremely knowledgeable and friendly staff, and they also have a wellness shop which is filled with smoke shop accessories, health and wellness products, high quality hemp CBD products, including items for our beloved pets. As a small locally owned Maryland business, they are proud to support over 20 local vendors in their store. Chessicana is more than a dispensary. Their mission is to take you on a journey of health and wellness, providing you with a higher quality of life that enhances your mind, body, and soul. Search for them online at chessicana.com, on Facebook and Instagram at chessicana underscore wellness, as well as at chessicana underscore deli. Hello, everyone. Welcome to um, our cooking class. Uh, my, my name is Will, and i um, AKA Saucy Willie, my lovely wife, Gwen, Saucy Mama, has stepped out. She will be right back in here so we can formally introduce her when she gets back in. Um, for those who don't know us, uh, we started Saucy Willie back in 2015. And it started around our condiment company. So we created hot sauces, seasonings, different simple syrups, marmalades, and preserves as well. We did a lot of farmers mark different events throughout the entirety of Maryland and um, some other states also. And then we started branching off about two, three years ago now, um, partnering with different dispensaries and putting on these cooking with cannabis classes to teach medical patients like you and myself, um, how we can all cook with cannabis at home effectively, easily with simple ingredients and nothing that's too crazy over the top that you can't do yourself. So that's what we really focused on um, with these classes and what we wanna bring and teach. Um, this is Gwen. This is Saucy Mama right here. I just got done introducing us to everyone. So outside of doing the cooking with cannabis classes, we also have a podcast um, called Disability Podcast, where we kind of go about talking about our life around disability. And we also have a YouTube channel uh, called Disability, where you can go on there and view all kinds of uh, videos. We just started to upload them videos of cooking with cannabis. So we have our first one on there with THCA FICO. You can see that one and we will begin uploading a bunch of other ones as well. So if you wanna see some more videos on how to cook with cannabis, definitely check out that um, channel and we'll definitely plug some links into the chat so you can have those on there too. All right, so we'll briefly chat about what we're going to do today. Um, hopefully everyone has their recipes you should have all gotten the three individual recipes that we're gonna do today during the uh, demonstration. So you can use those for reference or you could just watch me now and then have those, look at those later. So the first, we're gonna kind of go backwards today. It's gonna be a little switch around. We're gonna start with the dessert because kind of like a Mother's Day themed dessert that we're doing. And then we're gonna move on to the codfish balls, kind of like your Memorial Day celebration in May. And then we're gonna finish off with the, uh, sangria margarita which is kind of a celebration for tomorrow Cinco de Mayo so we kind of hit a bunch of different holidays in May and we are going to go backwards with the uh, dessert starting first Gwen yep. you're up all right what we're going to do first though is we will be infusing some things today Boom. And the lava cake recipe is gonna be infused with the CBG product, Loyal Oil Company. And they sell this right in the Chessicana wellness shop. So you can purchase this right there. It's a CBG crumble concentrate. It's already activated. And we're going to infuse that into the lava cakes. Now we're gonna show you how to go about doing that right now. Is there a secondary camera now? We're trying to upload a secondary camera so you guys can get an up close look too. This is our first virtual class too. So we are, yeah, we're used to having everyone in person. So we are 
going through this the first time as ourselves as well. If you have any questions as we're going through this, I'm sure you will. We usually do these with people in the class. So go ahead and send those into the chat discussion. We would definitely answer as many as we can as we go through. Um, we'd love to have the engagement. So if there is something that you want to ask as we go on, don't hold it in. Feel free to shoot it out there and we will try to get to it for sure. Okay. <laughs> So it's pretty simple to turn a loose concentrate into an oil or a tincture. So what we're going to do today is pretty much do that very quickly for our um, lava cake recipe. So we've got our loyal oil company, CBG, that we have um, received from the wellness shop. So really awesome stuff. Make sure you check it out. So this one smells amazing. And CBG is pretty... Uh, pretty interesting. We're showing it in the other camera up close yeah. if you care to view so it. CBG itself is not going to be like um, any other concentrate that you use. Its uh, structure is completely different, so it's very waxy and dry. Um, let's see. I thought you had it. Just use this? Yeah. And then clean it up. Okay. I'm going to move this jar while this went. Double beaker here that we're going to use. You can pretty much use anything on the Mega Stir. Um, if you use, I wouldn't use a mason jar on there. If you did, make sure you watch it. Um, and it may take a little bit longer for your. Um, contents to heat up. So we've got our CBG here, and we're just going to add this into our beaker. I like CBG because it comes out pretty much clean. Now at home, you're wondering, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? I can't get some of this out of the jar. That's okay. I have like what I call a trash jar at home. So that is filled with grain alcohol and anything that can't come out of a container or on a dab tool, I just throw it in there. And then eventually evaporate off the alcohol and get it concentrated. So we'll throw in, get sad about it. So the first thing we're gonna do is use some MCT oil here. Um, I like the organic coconut MCT oil, but you can use whatever you want. Sometimes they're derived from palm oil as well. So I'm just going to heat this up, turn it on. So there's many different types of magnetic stirrer that you can get. You can get digital, you can get um, analog. This one I like is the analog one um, we got from Amazon. And it is really nice because it has a very, you can go really low in your, your um, mixing rate and also very high. A lot of the ones that you come across, you won't be able to do it very slowly. It's just kind of like, okay, let's go. So we're heating this up. We're going to add our MCT oil. Just a little bit. Because we don't want to add too much to the recipe. So about five milliliters of oil is in there. After it melts down and mixes, then I will decide if I need to add five more milliliters. Because every concentrate is different. So you want it to be loose enough so it can pour directly out into your recipe without any issue. But you also don't want to add too much. No. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to affect your uh, your overall recipe and the consistency that's going to come out. Then you'll be upset that your end result did not turn out as like a lava cake <laughs> or too much lava. Too much lava. <laughs> <laughs> now, some, now, if somebody doesn't have one of these at home, is there any like alternative they can do to melt this quicker? So the alternatives are plenty. You can use a candle warmer. Um, you can also use, because this is already active. You don't have to do carbon. That's the great thing about the CBG. Um, so you don't have to worry about that at all, but you do have to melt it down. So a candle warmer works. The warmer on your coffee pot, coffee machine works. Um, you can also do it over gentle heat. I wouldn't say, I would say probably like 
an oil bath will probably be better than a water bath just because I'm very clumsy and I get water in things. And water is a no no in lots of recipes. <laughs> what are you doing? I am just melting our butter and chocolate so we can get ready for the recipe that we're about to do. So while we are waiting for this CBG, as you can see, it's already beginning to melt now. We have this bigger block here in the center that is kind of dragging along, <laughs> but it's going now. So as we're doing that, I'll bring the camera over here so you can see on the other one, we're just gonna melt our butter and sugar, uh, butter and white chocolate that you can find in the lava cake recipe. Now, if I was at home, I would just be doing this in the microwave. Um, but since we are doing this class today, I'm just gonna do it right here on our induction burner. So that way, when this CBG over here is finished, completely melting, we can get right into making our cake. It's almost done. Yeah, it's moving quick now. I'm gonna add our stir bar in there and start stirring. Well, no, I'll wait. And what do you get? What's the stir bar gonna just, just help us mix it all together? Yeah, I don't like to work hard. So stir bars make the work so much easier. And if you're wondering why my my stir is so 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 dirty, it's not. It's stained. I had an accident. I had bad hands. It's horrible. Arthritis sucks. <laughs> all right. And that's pretty much it. Now we're just bringing it all together. You can manually do this um, with any kind of like dab tool, toothpicks um small knife it really doesn't matter so we are just going to take this out check our viscosity i want to make sure that like there's no concentrate kind of clinging anywhere and i can pour it out easily when it cools down that looks just fine so if you're wondering what you want to do with a stir bar at home put it in your mouth lick it eat it <laughs> There's no waste in cooking. Only opportunities. All right. I'm going to slide this out of way. We do have a barrage of equipment with us, so we are going to move and shift as we go along here. Okay. All right. Let me just carry oh, this it. over here. I just done it. I'm trying to bring it into the camera's uh, view. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna just leave now. All right. <laughs> Can you plug the um, fryer back in? Set it to 350, please. Yep. Okay. As you can see, our butter and chocolate are bubbling away. And I'm gonna turn it off now because we're pretty much at a melting point here now. So I'm gonna just turn this off. And we are gonna get started with the recipe. If you are able to, I don't know if you have it printed out or if you have it pulled up on a different computer or something, we are gonna go along and start doing the recipe right now. And we will talk about adding our CBG. And by the time we are finished this recipe, we will also talk about what kind of milligrams you can look at as far as CBG in each of um, the cakes that we're gonna do. Now, depending on what size ramekin you use will de determine how many cakes you're gonna yield. So keep that in mind. Got our kitchen aid here. See if I can turn that to the side and you can get a better angle at times, that would help. Mm -hmm. This is our KitchenAid. This is what we're gonna to use to make everything. If you don't have one of these at home, this recipe is not too intense. You can actually do this by hand if you really want to, if you don't have this. I don't want to. I'll <laughs> get the KitchenAid for the mixer. So you can do the hand mixer, it doesn't matter, just as long as the whisk, whisk attachment. All right. So our oven is preheated to 400 degrees. Make sure you do that um, before you get started. Can you bring the other ingredients over for the cake? Oh, that would help. Thank you. All right, 
So now the first thing we are going to do is we are going to put this butter and white chocolate into the mixer here. And grab my spatula, that would help. And we're just gonna mix it up together just so we can incorporate the butter and the chocolate, make them marry each other. Oh, that's sweet. And at this point, we will add our CBG as well, correct, Juanel? Yes, CBG goes in. And we're adding it with the fats. Um, any, re any baked recipe you do, you always try to add your cannabis product in whenever you're adding your fats, your butter, whenever you're creaming sugar or something, put it all in there together. All right. Is it plugged in? No, it's mm -hmm. not. Okay. Now it's plugged in. Don't you want to add this first? Go ahead. You can pour it in while we're mixing it. I don't want to. Okay. We're gonna do it. That's how you waste, you waste medicine. I'm going to show an overhead over. view. All right. She's there. just adding the CBG that we melted on the... And I want to show you something so you know at home why we add more oil. So take a look. So this is what you are trying to avoid when you add more oil. So this is just oil and CBG. You're always gonna, you may have like some residual left behind, but uh, that's a bit too much. I like to add any like residual that I have behind is really nice to just take a marshmallow and go throughout the beaker or the jar or anything else that you have. And just eat it. I like to minimize waste. So yeah, I mean, cooking sometimes you you may get a little bit more medicated than you want to before you finish. But you can also say that I have definitely saran wrapped a jar or a beaker or something and had it the next day with a marshmallow. All right. I think we have something in the chat too. If you want to check that while I, I start like lining this up, look on your phone. Okay. You should be able to pull it up. Okay. All right, so now I am just gonna incorporate all this together and mix everything up. You don't need to whisk it for a long period of time. Again, you're just getting it all blended together really nicely. Where's our orange dress? You said where's the orange dress? All right, so as you can see, that is looking good. We're just gonna go ahead and add our orange zest, vanilla, cardamom to our mixture here. Now, if you don't have vanilla bean, don't worry about it. You can use extract. It's hard to find vanilla bean a lot of the times and it's also pretty expensive, so. Yeah, we couldn't even find the, it was, it was just hard. So vanilla paste works, that's what we use today. Yeah. Pandemic shopping, gotta do what you gotta do. All right, turn that on, blend it up nicely. This is actually our first time away from the kids in a long time. So you're kind of hanging out with us on a date night. Yes. So thank you all for joining. Thank you. <laughs> all right. All right. Now, now that this is fully dispersed within here, we're going to go ahead and add our powdered sugar right here. You can see everything's already pre-measured out. Make sure you do that when you are cooking at home. That way you spend less time going back and forth throughout your kitchen. I've learned throughout the years to just get as much of the ingredients ready before I begin actually cooking something. It saves saves you more time. All right, so we're just gonna incorporate all of this together. And now you can see it building up on the sides of the bowl there. Just turn, turn it off and then come across, get your spatula and go down the sides of the bowl and get everything blended up. I usually do this for each step. So anything time I add an ingredient, I'll blend it up and then go back and just hit the sides and every time you add some, that way you can just make sure everything's just getting incorporated the way you need it to. I like this recipe because it's simple. So you can do this really quickly, like after dinner and you're like, man, you know, really want a dessert, but 
I don't have time to make anything. This is actually pretty quick to do. Adding our eggs now. I'd like to do it one at a time instead of dropping everything in there at one all together. Give it some time to blend up and then go ahead and add another one. So we have our three eggs and our one egg yolk together in this bowl that I'm dropping in here right now. That looks so sexy. Can you get our round things good? Oh, yeah. Okay, yep. Last egg going in right now. Coming. All right. Now that you have your eggs all mixed in there, now all we're going to do is add our xanthan gum and our gluten free flour. And yes, all of the recipes that we are doing today are gluten free too. So if you or someone you love is gluten free, you can pass this recipe along to them. And if you're not gluten free, no big deal. You can sub the same flour that we're using for all purpose flour or baking flour at home. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and add our flour and our xanthan gum mixture in here. And Gwen, why are we adding the xanthan gum <laughs> to this recipe? So I like to add extra xanthan gum than that which is in a gluten-free recipe or gluten-free um, flour, just because the xanthan gum is what acts as the fake gluten in your gluten-free flour. Um, sometimes, well, I prefer it to be more true to wheat flour. And for me, that's adding a little bit of extra xanthan gum to the mix. Again, we're going to cut it off and we're just going to go around the sides of this bowl one more time. And then once that is all mixed up, we are going to begin adding it to our ramekins. We will show you on the camera the size that we have. Again, that will determine how many cakes you're going to yield, obviously, but also it's going to affect your overall CBG milligram at the end as well, depending on how many or how little cakes you end up with. And with this recipe, you can definitely turn your um, CBG concentrate into an oil kind of like dropper and then use the amount that you need milligram wise that way. So it's more um, liking to your dose. However, Will likes this dose for himself. So we're making his medicine. This is what we're doing today. Paper time. All right. All right. Ramekin. Yeah. Oh, did you show the ramekin yet? Here. Okay. Sweet. So here is the ramekin we have. It's pretty small. I'll put it in this camera so you can see it too. It's in the palm of my hand. Risen a little high. Definitely spray these with pan spray. If you don't spray it with pan spray, your cake is not going to come out. And all the hard work and every med whatever medicine you put into this, I mean, you can eat it out of the ramekin, but it's just not going to turn out the way you want it to. So do not forget the pan spray. And make sure you spray liberally. We prefer the um, taste of olive oil with this cake. So that is pretty much why we chose an olive oil pan spray. All right. I'm coming over to you. Okay. You want to move the mixer out of the way? Yeah, good idea. Oh, get thanks. this out of the way. And we will go hand ahead hand and fill these cakes up. Don't say I never do that before. I appreciate that. That's sweet. Thank you. You're sweet. You really are. All right. So we are going to go ahead and just start pouring. Keep in mind how much you pour into each of these because they will rise kind of like a souffle. So I'm only gonna go just about up to this ridge, which is three quarters of the way. And if you're doing multiple ones, you wanna get them all filled the same way, that way they all cook evenly each time. So there's one thing in the recipe that I cannot stand. So when I look at like recipes online, and I see things and they're like, oh, just do a smidgen or a dash or, or a pinch or something like a crazy measurement. Like we um, would like you to have 1 64th of a teaspoon of this spice. So they have those measuring spoons that are, um, I would get them from Amazon, pretty much everything from Amazon because I mean, it's Amazon. Um, they have the smidgen spoons. So that's pretty much what we use for 
the measuring the cardamom since we didn't need that much. Cardamom is very strong spice. So we used that. So how many did you get? So we ended up getting six lava kegs here. All right. Six. All right. So we're going to pop these in the oven. Should take maybe only about 14 minutes. And I'll be right back. I'm going to carry these for her. For me? Oh, yeah. thanks, Kay. <laughs> You're so lovely. Okay, every oven is different. So anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes, you just want to make sure it's a lightly brown on top. Um, again, we want it, it's not going to be like a full firm cake because we're going to cut it in lava, the term lava cake, that's what it's going to show it's and come insane. out. So while that is cooking, <laughs> we're going to make our raspberry basil sauce, which is quite easy. All right. Super easy to do, not hard. Show you just how easy it is going to be. Show them, babe, show them how right. easy it is. We'll just put your raspberries in there. You can do this on about medium heat, but then as the raspberries begin to cook and the sauce begins working, you'll wanna cut down the heat because you don't want it to be bubbling all over the place. It's just unnecessary. No, I the first Yeah, we're just going to put everything together. Can you get me on a spatula, please? Yes, sir. I'm keep I just wipe that one off. Okay. Add our sugar. And our basil as well. I like to just mix the herbs in there now. Some people like to save the fresh herbs till the end. Um, I just put everything together. To me, it doesn't really matter. It's all coming out the same way. Cut our heat down a bit. These things are hard to control. If you have an open flame heat at home, it's easier to kind of turn it up and down. You got that spatula? Yeah. Here you go, man. All right, thank you. Now, as this cooks, these raspberries will break down. And the longer you cook it, the thicker the sauce will be. If you, if you don't cook it as much, obviously, it's not going to be as thick. You honestly can take the consistency to whatever you want. There's no real way that this needs to be done. Yeah, I mean, if you didn't even want the berries to be broken down, you don't have to. <laughs> as you can see, it's breaking down pretty nicely. I'm just gonna cut our heat up a bit. If you don't like the seeds of the raspberry as well, and that's like one thing that just drives you crazy, I know um, that can definitely be a thing. You can definitely strain this sauce after it's done. But to me, it doesn't really matter. I like them either way and I'll just put it right over top. Cooking softens the seeds. It's true. And don't worry about not eating all of this. I mean, you can keep this in your fridge after you make it. It'll hold for a while. It's like making a jam or a jelly. They don't really mold that much. It should last a while. If you add water to it, that will probably shorten the shelf life that you have of this. But this should last you. You'll eat it before it goes bad. We'll just say that. <laughs> so what are the different ways we can medicate this? We'll talk about it. Yeah. So if you were going to medicate the cake, you can do it with an infused butter as well. Just uh, know that there is a specific way to do it. If you were going to do it, you add your concentrate directly like we did to butter. And that's pretty much it. So I would, uh, <laughs> I would, I would definitely, um, what are they? Sorry, oh, brain fart. Oh no. You're having a moment? I am. We're talking about adding concentrate into the batter. Oh 
Oh yeah. So when you make your butter at home normally, it's going to end up as clarified butter. So that's not what you want to bake with, to be honest with you. You want to keep the recipe the same and not have to deal with texture issues or um, co composition issues with your recipe. Make sure you use full butter. And that's the, the way we did it is the way you would want to do it. So we didn't have to worry about the lack of um, milk solids in there that have a uh, negative effect if they're not in the recipe. Yeah, a bunch of different ways you can do it. You can even, this sauce, if you wanted to infuse the sauce in really good, you could put a turp sap or um, a distillate in here and do it that way as well. Tincture works. Tincture. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say an oil tincture. I would say an alcohol tincture. Oil tincture would probably be okay. Now, wh while this is going, we'll talk about the uh, dosing a little bit. I'll try to put this here. This is the container. You probably can't see the numbers, but that's okay. What this is, it's just giving you the information, milligram per milligram, uh, total milligrams in here for CBG and CBD on the back of this container, which makes everything super helpful. So you don't have to do any math to break it down yourself. No math. That's how we like the containers with the cool labels. So we did six cakes. Okay. There's total, it tells us there's a total of 550 milligrams of CBG in this concentrate here. So all you do is take that 550 milligrams and divide it by the amount of cakes you got. So we got six. We have a total of 91.6 milligrams of CBG in each cake, okay? You may be thinking, oh my God, that's a high number of CBG. However, if you were to have, say, um, an immune issue or a cancer or um, GI problems, the amount of CBG that you would use would definitely be way more than the regular, maybe like 10 to 15 milligrams. When you're working with minor cannabinoids and you're medicating, it is imperative to know that those things are usually um, able to be used in higher doses because they don't have any of the adverse effects as THC, say like extreme dry mouth and um, paranoia, or sometimes um, people get depressed. People have um, different reactions to cannabis, we're all different. So if you have too much or too little with the CBG, you're not necessarily going to have those effects that you would have THC. Yes. Oh, it's pretty. There's also CBD in here, and I can give you um, that information as well. There's a total of 46.7 milligrams in this entire thing. So again, same thing. We're going to do 46.7 divided by six, and that's going to tell us that there's 7.7 milligrams of CBD in each of the cakes too. So you've got some CBG and some CBD working in one of your nice lava cakes. Awesome. There's about just under seven minutes left on these cakes. So the raspberry basil sauce is completely finished. I got it to a consistency that I like. And keep in mind, you, the consistency you see when it's hot is not gonna be the consistency you see when it's cold because as it sits in your fridge and cools down, this will get thicker. So if you want more of a lighter sauce, maybe pull it off a little bit beforehand and to check it, you can always take a really cold plate, put some of the sauce on it, and then you can really tell when it cools down on that plate, what it's gonna look like at the end. This is the consistency I want to go with. As we wait for these cakes to finish, we will just continue moving forward onto our next recipe as well. Oh, that's me. I got to do stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh, snap. Well, no, we're going to, yeah, get the um, the AVB. Yeah. Bear with me one moment as we gather the ingredients for our next recipe. If anyone has any questions, please ask away in the chat. I'm sorry if someone's asked already and we missed them. Were you able to find out how to get on yeah. the chat? Okay. It looks like, I don't think that's We're here. good. Okay. Cool. All right. We're getting everything ready, as you can see here, for the codfish cakes. Let me turn our fryer on to where it needs to be. You have your recipe pulled up? Yes. Oh, snap. I think. Look at you. No, right. you don't. I got it. It's, it's, it'll confuse you the way I have it. It will definitely. <laughs> I, I will definitely um, just walk away from that one. All right. So let me pull my recipe up so I can look at it with you as well. Am I missing something? No, it doesn't look like it. All right, do you want to 
Real quickly, we are gonna start with making the sauce first for the fish. So there's a chipotle remoulade sauce that we are going to pair along with these fried codfish balls. And we are going to infuse, show you how to infuse these with already vape bud, AVB. Now, if you have a vaporizer at home, whether it be a tabletop or handheld, do not throw your vape bud away because there's plenty of studies that have shown that there is a surprisingly amount, a high amount of THC still left in your vape bud. Um, if you have a volcano, Volcano Company has um, a study on their website that they did with their machine and vape bud, and it had a like ridiculous amount a ridiculous of THC, amount of still, THC left. Yeah, still left <laughs> in the vape bud. Um, so we always say don't throw it away. Um, we usually make salves with it at home. It's a good thing to use for topicals, but you can also it taste terrible it. normally. Yeah. <laughs> Another reason why we are using it in this particular recipe because the chipotle remoulade sauce with the herbs that we're going to use and the chipotles is really going to mask any of that smoky flavor or toasty flavor that might come along with the ABB. So yeah, I mean, because ABB in itself can definitely be used with your cooking. When you are cooking and you have your ABB, make sure that if a recipe has, would be enhanced by a toasted flavor or a nutty flavor, then your ABB would go very well in that recipe. Anything else, you might not be able to match the yuck flavors Whoa, careful that is slippery you almost saw me wipe out on camera that would have been great oh maybe that's why i almost fell like two minutes ago <laughs> that would have been a good group, right? <laughs> I was sitting there like i'm like well, maybe i'm ready to go balance right now hope he's all right huh? nothing i'm just talking to myself. <laughs> oh that's great that's the first step bro so we're going to move some equipment again we're shifting i'm going to bring over our food processor because we are just going to throw all of these ingredients into this together now at home, you can use lots of different types of blenders situations to uh, accomplish this. A bullet blender, a regular blender, a stick blender, immersion blender, anything. But this is our like commercial equipment. <laughs> yeah, it's really just a, a spice grinder for it's us, like but it gets it really, it gets it done the way it needs to be. Yeah. Um, right. Now, the only obvious downside to using AVB, we don't know exactly what percentage of THC we are going to have, okay? We're as patients, it's just the only way. We can't test it ourselves really and we don't know exactly what it is. So Gwen, so, what is the rule of thumb that you would say to go by? Yes, so the volcano study is awesome. However, if you don't have a volcano, that information is not gonna apply to you. And if it's not done with the specific machine that they did, because it's probably, it, scientifically speaking, it's not gonna be the same from uh, machine to machine. There may be slight variances even in their own machines as to what THC is left in the cannabis. So for, and every vaporizer is different. So for us, our vaporizer is pretty like, I mean, it's, it's, it's good. I like it. It's an Airizer um, Extreme Q, but that one is nice because it kind of, I think it gets more of the THC out of it instead of like the volcano is more about terp preservation than THC extraction. So that's one of the reasons why they, uh, or end, they end up with more THC in their bud. So I would pretty much say about 8% is the low end that you could say. And I would definitely always go with the low end because you don't, you have no idea unless you had the specific machines that were studied. So 8% cannabinoids will be in um, your, your THC. Yeah. Your ADD. yeah, one gram. So that's why we're only using one gram of the already baked bud today. See right here up and close. It's basically decarbed weed. Okay, yeah, that's what much. it is. Um, with no terps. So, <laughs> exactly. Scratch. So, it still has benefits. So, yeah. it's a, it'd be a waste to throw this away. You can definitely make something with this, whether you want to eat it or not. You can put it in topical. Exactly. That's what I like. Okay. So, let me see. Let me. See. You want me to move the camera? Yeah, move the camera. I'm going to okay. slide over so we can maybe get the better angle as well. Let me get front and center here. All right. Now, the cool thing about this is the longer this sauce sits, the better it tastes because you give the herbs that we're gonna use time to kind of soak into the mayonnaise and everything kind of work together. So if you make this uh, days ahead before you have this meal, you'll, you'll taste the difference. And even like a week later, you'll go back and try some and you'll see that more of the, um, it has more of an intense flavor as it sits longer and longer. Because there is vinegar in mayonnaise. What does vinegar do? It's gonna pull out the flavor of everything else, suck it out of everything, blend it together. And the fat in this recipe and the vinegar Check is the also going to uh, 
extract the cannabinoids from the ABB. And you could also use this with non-decarb weed for an acidic version of your medicating. So CBDA, CBGA, THCA, all those things you can get from just not decarbing it. Just grind it up and throw it in there. All right. Our timer just went off for the cakes, but they are not done. Again, like I said, every oven is different. This oven is different than the one in our house. So you just keep an eye on them because it might be the same thing for you too. So we're gonna add our chipotles in here. All right, gives it a nice spice. Now, if you want this to be spicier and you make this and you're like, man, I want this to be spicy, you can add more chipotles into this and blend it up again. We'll put more in there now when you're doing it the first time. Don't worry about, that's not gonna affect how this sauce really turns out. Now this here is our green onions already chopped up. We also have our basil, our thyme, and our oregano. Now the ABB goes so well with this because the basil, thyme, and oregano are kind of like um, staple ingredients that you can find in a lot of blackening seasonings, um, a lot of Cajun cooking. So if you know that flavor, that toastiness of this ABB is kind of gonna blend in really nicely with this and it's not gonna stick out where you would otherwise say, ew, what is that? <laughs> okay, now we just added everything together. Okay, now we'll turn the machine on. Let's blend it up really nicely. I'm going to take our lid off. Okay. It smells so good. Now, I know, I wish everyone was here. They could actually smell and we could give out cannabis free samples of everything. But one, eventually, we'll get back to doing that. Yeah. One day. All right. So you can see it blends it up really nicely. Everything is nicely coated. And it's okay if it's not pulverized. You can have some chunkiness in here too. Okay, so we're gonna set that to the side for now as we move on to the second part of our recipe, which is cooking the fish. Cooking the fish. Okay, move our sauce for our lava cakes out of the way. And let me check them to make sure it's still going. Are you still going? Yep, it's still going. All right. Oh, let me get Can it. you grab me the uh, fish ingredients, please? Yes, sir. Again, this next part is very easy too. You just want to, the easiest part is just getting, I mean, the hardest part is just getting everything together. Then once you have it all together and you have space, um, you, can get, you can get this done quick. Let me grab our blender because we are going to use the same machine here as we did before. And you can see we're going to blend up our fish to get it to a consistency that we want. So that way we can form them into nice little balls and we can drop them in our fryer. Oh. You don't need that. Do no. Oh, but where's the seasoning? But it was in the um, same bag that we have at home. Oh, snap. But I can just use. No. Okay. I got it. Okay. No. All right. Let me move the camera over here so you can see. Well, I'll have Gwen come over here How in a moment. Um, I was just going to do it to taste. Oh, sweet. Yeah. That makes me happy. Anytime we use our recipes when it comes to salt, we always say to taste because everyone's taste for salt is a different than anything. And it's really up to you what you want to put in there as far as that. All right. Where's my phone? Okay. Moving along into our recipe. Now that our sauce is done, let's just say it's sat in the fridge for three days and here we are, we're ready to kind of cook our fish. Now, our cod, here you go. Nothing fancy, it's codfish. We got it at Wegmans in the frozen section. Okay, so this isn't something wild caught, some expensive type of fish. These are great for frying. Codfish is great for frying, which is why we are using it today. Now let me grab a, a glove or, or Over no. Over there. So you're right. Ah, cool. There Thank you, you go. I don't feel like having fish all over my hands right now. Oh no. So like it. this is already, we already cut it up. And before we cut it, we thawed it out and then we patted it dry because when this fish comes out of the package, it's really wet. 
And you don't want to drop a really wet fish into the fryer. It's going to adding water into your oil. It's just going to bubble like crazy. If you don't, well, we'll get to that. I'm going to add our fish now. And we may have to do this on two runs. What do you think? Or just one? Then we can fit it? Um, I, can... I don't know. You can, you can put it in there and see. Yeah. They're not brown yet, but they're almost done. Yeah. Just show. I can watch them. Gotcha. All right. So we have our fish in there. And then we have four ounces of potato. Now, this was already cooked. We cooked this beforehand. All we did was I sliced it up and boiled it in a pot just till they're tender. Take them out, remove them, put them in your fridge, let them get nice and cool. Then you can add it into your, why are we adding potato into this recipe, Gwen? Why not? What's it, what's it, what's the benefit of it for this? For it's this? food. Well, it helps pull everything <laughs> together for frying too. Yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> it helps pull everything together, especially cause I mean, it's fish. I like to have these, this, this recipe, you could put these little fish balls on a sub if you wanted. One beaten egg. Potatoes are traditionally in fish bowls or codfish cakes. And then we have our Virgin Island rub that we make, um, one of those seasonings that we make. It has Himalayan salt base, there's black pepper, there's clove, allspice, garlic, garlic green onions, leeks, all kinds of yummy ingredients that is going to be in here. And we're just going to season to taste. So whatever. Now remember, this may look like a lot on top of here, but we have a ton of fish sitting underneath of this. So we want everything to be blended up nicely and make sure that our fish doesn't come out bland and taste this. And all these recipes are scalable. So you want to increase the amount of food you make, no problem. You can also make these, uh, maybe I'll just apply it. <laughs> As we blend this up, I'm gonna to need to get the uh, spatula. Depending on what kind of blender you're blending these up in, you will need to push them down. You can see it's already starting to blend some of it now. We're just going to give it some help and mix it up some more. A regular food processor is much better for this activity than this machine. Yes. But this is what we got, so we're using it. Use what you have. also a pain in the butt to open and close. <laughs> yeah, it is. So you can see we're getting there. And we're gonna, we're not, huh? One more. Maybe. We're not gonna blend it up like till it's completely like pulverized or you wanna have some texture, I'll just say that. You wanna leave some texture to your fish balls. <laughs> You know, if some, if not all the fish is blended, that's fine. If not all the potatoes are completely blended up, that's perfectly fine too. It's fluffy. It is fluffy. Cakes are almost done. I can see them from here. They are looking mm -hmm. good. We might do this for one more round here and then <laughs> fry these up. All right. Yeah. I believe we used this last time too, yeah, but it wasn't that bad. Thing. All right. Moving along, we need our um, breading. I'll grab oh, it. Okay. I'm going to take these out too. Okay, that's good. Here, I'll bring these over here. Oh. Bring in our ingredients over for breading, and then we are going to take out our lava cakes, and I'll kind of put them up front and center so you can see what they're looking like. Um, do you have the other hand towel so I can take it out of you? Yeah, in here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Ooh, pretty. It's so fancy. I'm gonna sit it over here. In the front. And I'll bring one over so we can kind of check it out. I would have done burn myself. Okay. 
where are we at? Like we're gonna pause where we're at with this fish real quick so we can show you this cake now. We will come right back to this. Okay, so here we are, it's hot. I have it in a towel, obviously, or my hand would be in a lot of pain. So <laughs> I have our plate. Now what you do is you wanna get a nice oven rag like this and hold, plop it over onto your plate and then lift it up off of here. Okay. Come on, there we go, out of the way. Here's our cake. Now, if you did it in a bigger ramekin, it would look a little different, but I'll put it into this okay. view is better. There you yeah, see. Yeah, the ramekin we used in the picture was I think what, an eight ounce ramekin? Yeah, it was a bigger ramekin. This, these are taller and smaller. Now, go ahead and just take your raspberry sauce. You can do whatever you want with it, but we like to just put it right over top. However much you want on there. And then you can eat it. So now it's ready. You can just cut it right open. And then a little bit of lava coming out of there. Yay! And take that and eat it. Now, again, any, everybody's oven is different, OK? So always keep an eye on them. Um, that way you can pull them out when, you're, when they're ready and when you want them to be done. So how many milligrams is in this cake again? Again, it was, what did we say? 90, 91. One, yeah. 91 milligrams CDG. Awesome. Very good. Snacks. Okay. Anybody have any questions about the anything. lava cake or anything that we have discussed so far? Please, please let us know. Mm -hmm. All right. Moving right along, back to our fish. Okay. There's a bowl over there. Hmm? There's a bowl over there. I was gonna use this to put them, oh. put them in. You're okay. smart. Just keep an eye on this other camera for me. Okay. What do you mean keep an eye on it? Make sure like... it's where it needs to be because I can't tell. Oh, okay. All right. You know, I don't know what you'd be saying unless you'd be real specific. All right. Now we have our puffed rice. Now this is just Rice Krispies that we blended up. Why? Because it's gluten-free. Yeah. You can use panko and do the same thing. They do have gluten-free panko, but it's literally just ground Rice Krispies. It's cheaper to buy a box of Rice Krispies. <laughs> okay. And our flour, gluten-free flour. It's still in there. It's stuck in there. Oh, yes. Come on around. All right. Now just mix it up really good. And we are going, this is gonna be what we use to coat it. And we are coming up close to 6.30. So in lieu of time, we will not cook every single fried fish ball. But you will get the understanding of how Easy it is. Now we have our blended up mixture here of the fish, potatoes, seasoning, and egg. Now just kind of, oh, Where's your scoop? fail. Super fail. <laughs> a scoop is a friend. <laughs> and we use a scoop because again, this Come way on. we know it's gonna all cook at the same speed, the same rate, they're all gonna be the same size. And if you medicated the fish balls themselves, they're with either, um, medicating it with the olive oil that's added to the fish or if you are medicating it with you can definitely do a tincture but i would add it with the egg um then you would definitely know what's uh how much what your dosing is right yeah yeah i'm gonna drag our deep fryer over that's why well, you see me moving around all frantically real quick frantically running a lot of equipment that we brought with us and it's pretty Don't hot. Don't spill it. Is it hot? Use yeah. the handles. Be okay, small. here we go. The cord on this thing is so small, oddly small. So, safety feature. If, if you had to review it, that would be the one negative. But the rest of it's good. And if you don't have one of these fryers at home, these little friendly fryers, don't worry about it. You can do the same thing in a deep pan or a pot with oil. The only difference is this thing is controlling the temperature for us. If you use something in a, no, annoying beeping. Uh, 
It's not you, it's the fryer. I was letting you know it's preheated. Oh, um, okay. Here's one of our fried fish balls. If you are cooking in a pot at home with oil, do not ever step away from it or walk away from it. Always attend it because, and keep a thermometer by, keep checking that temperature because you don't want it to get too hot and cause a fire, obviously, in your home. So manage your flame and keep an eye on your oil on the stovetop. Very important. You know, this is just not even. So I'm going to do three of those real quick. Seriously. And we're just, I like to use a dish like this because as you can see, I can just go like this and roll them across without having to get my hands in there and coating them myself. All right. Now, our fryer, making our life easy. We're just going to put it in our basket here. And Gwen's going to bring the camera over so you can see. And we're going to drop it down. Now, if you wanted to infuse the fried fish balls, you absolutely can. Don't worry about the temperature. The temperature, of course, yes, we know it's 350 degrees. And you're like, well, what if my cannabis, is that too high of a temperature? Keep in mind that the internal temperature of this fish ball is only going to reach about 155, 165. So when you think about that, you can realize that your cannabis is not reaching 350 degrees. If this fish is only cooking to 165 internally, that's the internal temperature of this fish ball itself. That's the temperature it's going to be. These cook really quickly as well. I have it on 350. You can do them at 325 if you want them to be lighter, 375 if you want them to be really dark. But I keep it at 350, and it only takes about a minute or two to completely cook. Ow, it's burning my arm. It's popping. Damn it. All right. On the fry, like listening to a campfire, <laughs> <laughs> but different because you get food at the end. If you don't have the deep fryer like we were talking at home, there is another tool that you can use over there on your phone. Yes. This is called a spider. Spider whisk. Not it's whisk, just, spider spatula. Yeah, it's really great for frying. You can just get your stuff, scoop it out, and you don't have to use a tong or fork. Um, sometimes those can be a little finicky when you're dealing with oil. Um, this, you can just pick it up with a little basket and kind of get all that excess oil off before you transfer it out. Also, if you're frying anything super delicate, then you don't have to worry about it falling apart. We will go probably 10, 15 minutes over the time. So I apologize if you were trying to get off at 6.30. Um, but we want to show you everything so you can see how it's done properly. And if we can... Take a little extra time to do that. We're, we're going to get your sauce, son. Put it yes, in thank you. I knew it was something yeah. I was supposed to be doing. Do we have an extra bowl? There's plenty in the um thing. Ah, I'll use this. Huh? No, I'll use this. Okay, all right. All right, so we have our sauce here with our AVB. Okay. Now I measured this out, this recipe the sauce makes us about 12 ounces of sauce and I, me I measured um, the milligrams by an ounce of sauce okay so we only used that gram of ABB and we said we were just going to say it's about eight percent THC so with using that one gram gonna pull our fish balls up they are done with using that one gram one gram is equal to 1,000 milligrams so there is some math that you have to do to figure out your total milligram percentage if you don't understand how to do math, you can always visit our website, saucyaverly.com. Go to our can of basics tab. We do have dosing math on there as well as um, decarbing concentrates and flour. A lot of information and step-by-step -step that way you can follow it. So if you're not completely understanding or following along with what I'm saying with the math, just head to our website and it's all written down for you. Okay, so 1000 milligrams is in one gram. And we used, we said about roughly 8% THC. So we you gotta do some math with this. So one gram times 8% is gonna give you 80. So that's 80 milligrams of THC that we're saying is in our AVB, remoulade, chipotle remoulade sauce, okay? And that breaks down to about 3.3 milligrams per ounce. So remember we said there's 12 ounces in this. 
if I'm just saying it's it's nice and low because if you're eating more than one ounce, you're not going to be over the moon. Um, if 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 low dosing is something that's better for your body, like it is me. So or that's why you know I you just like to eat a lot of sauce. So yes. <laughs> All right, and then you have your fried your fish condiments bowl. low. Ideally, there would be more around here, okay? But you get the understanding now how easy and make these. I want to eat them. And now, <laughs> as we conclude, we are going to finish off with our sangria margarita. This one is nice and quick. I will bring the equipment over here for Gwen to show you what she is going to do because in this last recipe that we are showing you this sangria margarita, we have got a Evermore live resin cake batter, Orange Grove um, specifically. And we are going to make a tincture out of this that way we can add it to our beverage. Okay, as she brings over her things. Well, all right. I forgot to clean this. Okay. That's okay. Hold on. All right. She's just quickly going to wipe out the beaker that we used for the CBG. I forgot to bring the mosh beans. Now, this Evermore live resin here has all your information on there, but you do have to do some math with this because you can't just take this concentrate and put it right into your drink and think everything's going to be great. You have to decarb it first. Um, and what is decarbing? If you bought this concentrate and you were going to dab it at home, you're adding heat to the product, that's creating the THC molecule from THCA. So if we're going to add this into a drink or a food item, we have to heat it up beforehand as well so that we can activate the THC. So we put it in our oven before this class started here for about 45 minutes at 250 until it was completely done decarbing. Now, if you never decarb concentrates before, again, please go to the website. We have pictures step-by-step -step of what it looks like as you're going through the process. That will give you a full view of what you're doing. Sounds harder than it is. It's really easy to do. And Gwen's gonna show you what she has here with the decarb concentrate. All right. So we've got our decarb concentrate over here. And this is pretty much all it is, a half gram. So it doesn't really amount to much in a jar, right? So for that, we put it in a jar. The jar is going to keep all the terpenes. There's absolutely yeah. Okay. It smells good. It smells so the concentrates are full of terpenes, obviously, and it's going to smell more, more terpene. That's not even a word, but more of that, more terpene <laughs> smell than you will get the cannabis. So, okay. so I'm going to just measure. So this is a half gram. Normally I would have like a bunch of different pipettes and stuff. This is just grain alcohol. So we're going to put it in about 30 milliliters. Grain alcohol. This is Everclear. You can use pretty much anything you want. I use Everclear just because it's tasteless, pretty much. So this is how you would turn your concentrate into a tincture. Now this is an alcohol tincture. This is not a sublingual alcohol tincture. It's straight grain alcohol. It will burn the crap out of your mouth, and you'll be mad at me. So to avoid that this under our tongue at all. So we're going to use this for beverages themselves. If you have an alcohol tincture at home, it's usually a ratio of 60-40 water to alcohol, so you can take it under your tongue and it won't burn. So we're going to put our stir inside. All right. And, and again, if you don't have this magnetic stir at home, you can still achieve this with um, the information coffee warm stove, yeah. no microwave. I have yet to venture into the microwaving of anything cannabis related. 
So while this is waiting, slightly heating up, all we're going to do is slightly heat it up, and we're going to begin to stir it. And you will start to notice. Let me see if I can close. Closer. You will start to notice that all of that concentrate that is kind of stuck to the bottom, like a like a paste or glue, is going to slowly make its way mixed in with all of this grain alcohol here. And this will be the alcohol tincture that we will use for a beverage. Now, while this is doing that, let's talk about math real quick. So again, we used a half a gram. Now, earlier when I was talking about the gram, I let you know that it, one gram equals 1,000. So if we're doing half a gram, it's obviously half of that. So it's 500 milligrams in this concentrate, okay? We also know by looking at the information on the box that there is 74.5% THC in this particular concentrate. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your 500 and multiply it by this percentage on here. And that's going to give you a number 372.6 milligrams, okay? That's not your THC. That's just your THCA in milligrams that is in this concentrate. Now we had to decarb it, right? So we put it in our oven. Now, when you decarb some, when you decarb flour or concentrate, there is a molecular weight change that occurs in that heating process. So you have to take that into effect in doing your math. And the number that, that they came up with for that is 0.88, molecular weight change from THCA to THC. So we take that 372.6 milligrams and multiply it by that 0.88, and we get 327.8, okay? If I'm losing you, do not worry, again, you can find all this information on our website. So now we know that there's 327.8 milligrams of THC now that we've done our math. Now, all she did was add 29 milliliters of the grain alcohol. And what you can do from there is divide the 327.8 milligrams by the 29 milliliters. So divide it by 29 and you get 11.3. 11.3 milligrams per drop, okay? That is what this tincture is going to yield. So you can see, if you make this tincture at home, you're going you're gonna to save yourself a lot of money because only one drop is 11.3 milligrams. Now, for me, somebody like me on the low dose end, that's a perfect amount. If you're somebody that requires more, you can just add a few more drops to get to where you need. I need like half the concentrate. <laughs> <laughs> that's me. All right, here we go. And now it's done. Yay! There you go. All right, let's make this drink. Let's make this drink. Okay, let's do it. Nice and easy because all we're going to do is just add everything together. Now, this sangria margarita is typical, like a typical sangria because you want it to let it sit. You don't want to kind of make this and then have it the same day. If you let it sit for a day or longer, um, more of the flavor is going to be extracted. But keep in mind that we are using citrus. Now, the longer that citrus is going to sit in alcohol, it's going to get bitter. So you want to take your citrus out about, what, a day or two after it's been sitting, you think, or more? Say that one more time. When do you I want to take your citrus attention. out because you don't like the bitter? Oh, no more than 24 hours, or it'll be extremely bitter. What do you mean you don't like the bitter? You like bitter? You like extremely bitter? No, you like I, I was going to say, if you're a fan of I, <laughs> IPA beer, you might like it because it's no, okay. you won't like it. Okay, lies. All right. Yeah. <laughs> sure. okay. All right. So we have everything again portioned out. We're going to add our grapefruit here. I cut them thin. You don't have to cut them paper thin, but cut them thin enough that way it's faster for them to be extracted in your alcohol that you're going to be adding into here. Why am I using this one? We have our chopped pineapple because I think this is. The right size. Oh, snap. Okay. Okay. Fine. All right. We have our herbs here, our cilantro and thyme. Now, sometimes you can find um, an herb called lemon thyme at Wegmans or your grocery store. And that is similar to thyme, but it has a lemon citrus flavor. And that would also pair very nicely with this. So, what I'm going to do is I have some butcher's twine. You can see that hanging from here. Use any kind of string as long as it's food safe, it doesn't matter. And I'm just going to tie a knot around these herbs together. That way, we keep them together. That way, if you want to pull them out, you can. And also, that way, they're not going to be free floating 
all over the place inside your beverage. Yeah, because then I personally would just want to strain it. Over there, please. Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry. All right. Why do you need the scissors? So we have our sliced lime going in. I'm not giving you scissors. And our sliced lemon going in. They're all going in. All right. You can plop your little bundle of herbs in there now as well. And now we are going to add all of our liquid, okay? So we have a whole bottle of local white wine here, 40 Riesling. You can use whatever white wine you want, okay? You can use um, a Pinot is really nice as well as the Riesling. Prosecco works. Prosecco works. I mean, I'm, I like this. If you want it to be even sweeter, <laughs> you could add a Moscato or something like that too. I guess. Now, tequila. We have Añejo tequila here. I'm going to put it up to the secondary camera so you can see. You can use any old tequila you want. Don't just sit there and be like, well, he used Añejo. I have to buy the expensive. No, you don't. Okay. There's... We just prefer the flavor. Yeah. You can. Where's my measuring cup? What? I need a measuring cup. How, what, what size? I don't a remember. cup. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> Sorry. My bad. Okay. Gwen's going to get us a measuring cup. I will. I will get you a measuring cup. As I open up our orange juice. Now, this, this recipe is cool, but you can add whatever else you want into it, too. If you like some other fruits, you can add them in here as well. You can add as much fruit as you really want to your heart's content. Okay, finally got it. Ten years later. Whatever, they're all stuck together. That's why I don't like plastic. But I used the metal one already. Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So we have one and a half cups of the tequila going in. A little over. Okay. Well, I mean, you know, to your taste, right? Yeah. Now we're going to pour in a cup of our OJ. Now, as you can see, you want to have a nice pitcher because this is going to yield a decent bit. Now you may be thinking, where's the tincture at? Have you, why, what are you doing with that? We're gonna show you, don't worry. That's not going into this container. All right. It's not. No. We have a half a cup of lime juice because well, margaritas and limes, lime juice go together amazingly. And then we have some of our Some Like It Hot Simple Syrup. Now this guy here is gonna add our spiciness to it. I love spicy margaritas and I always, say you should have some spice in a margarita, all right? So this has Thai chilies, it has mango in there, cilantro, allspice, a bunch of different ingredients. Um, and we do sell these on our website too. Now this will also provide a little bit of sweetness as well as some spicy flavor. Okay, so we're gonna add a half a cup of this. And if you want spicier, add more. If you don't like it spicy or as spicy or spicy at all, don't add any or add a little bit. Yeah, you can use a regular simple beer. Exactly. Works. All right, so now you want to get, can you hand me one of the white spatulas? Yes. You just want to stir everything up. As you can see, we are to the very tip top of this container. This is about the biggest pitcher I have at home. So you can scale this recipe down if you don't want to make a big batch like this. Okay. But why wouldn't you want to make a big batch like this? Yes, that's true. <laughs> You can stir it up and get it all mixed up nicely so you can let it sit in your fridge for a day or two before you enjoy it and then come back. And then we are going to pretend like I just, the moon passed us and we're two days later, okay? And we're gonna add this drink into our cup now and enjoy some of it. Yeah. You wanna roll the glass for me? Yeah, all right. do that. So we are gonna add a little bit of salt to the rim of the cup because why not? Margaritas, are good with the salt on the rim. Are they will? Are they so good? <laughs> All right. Now remember, don't leave your citrus in there for too long. It'll create the uh, drink to get a lot more bitter. Not a lot more bitter, just bitter. It's not bitter at all. Okay. You let it sit in there for Let's three, four, five days. <laughs> to the secondary camera, if you can see that. All right, nice. there you go. Now, where's the tincture? That's when we're gonna add our tincture right into this 
cup here, okay? So we're gonna add our one drop because we only need, well, I only need 11.3 milligrams <laughs> right now, okay? And it's alcohol-based right there, okay? And then we can use something to stir it up. I'll just use the same to, oh, Gwen Don't brought mess with the, the, our fancy the salt, little, dude. It's not fancy, Stir it's bar. just lab glass. Okay. <laughs> just to incorporate everything, you can add ice to this as well. Um, but there you go. You don't need to add the tincture into the entire pitcher. Do it by the glass, make your life easier and save your tincture, <laughs> okay? That concludes our recipes for you guys today. And um, if anybody has any questions, we can take any extra questions at this time for sure. Um, I'm going to take the secondary camera and give it to Gwen so she can Do what? see if there is any questions coming in. Um, but again, if you guys want to keep up with us, please follow us on <laughs> all of our social media pages. Okay, we're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, um, but mainly on Instagram and Facebook. And um, we do post recipes on there. We do a lot of other recipes that you can, if you go to our website, you'll see we have all kinds of recipes from sweets, drinks, savory items, you name it, it's on there. Um, and and also, you be quiet. So <laughs> I will also be putting up all the links for anything that we discussed for purchase that we used today um, on our website. I'm going to put a tab up there and have it for our um, cooking class, our live Zoom cooking classes. And each time we do one, we'll have all the links available for you as well. So check that out. It'll be up by tomorrow morning. And I saw in the chat, someone asked, where can they get copies of these recipes? Go to our website. These recipes that we did today, each one is on the website under our recipes tab. Um, and then there's a lot more recipes on there too that you can find and print out and use at home as well. And you can always feel free to email, call, text, message, whatever, any questions you have. If you're in the middle of a recipe and you're like, I don't know, I did something. There's always a workaround for something. If there isn't, I mean, sometimes, you know. <laughs> yeah, if you have any extra questions about dosing or you need help trying to break down some math for your cannabis, email us. Um, our email is listed under the contact us on the website. And we'll definitely help you out. Substitutions. Yeah, substitutions. Mm -hmm. um, but again, yeah, check us out, um, website, and visit our YouTube channel at Disability on YouTube. You can view more step-by-step um, -step recipes that we do with cannabis as well. Remind, remind them what the website is. Oh, the website is Saucier Willie. So our company name, if you um, remember the ad that you had, is S A U C I R C I E R W I L L Y dot com. All of the information is on there, not just recipes, but um, other so, cannabis information that can help you out with making stuff at home. But yeah, yeah. thank you, thank you all for coming for and joining us on our us. date night. Thank yeah, you. I know, right. <laughs> <laughs> Ciao. Chessicana Enhanced Wellness is a medical cannabis dispensary located in the Hunt Valley area in northern Baltimore County. Their shop offers a huge selection of medical cannabis products as well as hemp-related CBD products for humans and pets alike. Check out their wellness shop filled with smoke accessories for all of your cannabis needs. You can find them on the web at chessicana.com.